This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best place to build and host a website. Blender 3.0 has been a long time in the making. Not only because Blender 2.0 originally came out over 20 years ago, but because Blender 3 was originally supposed to be released at the end of summer. The development team decided to delay the launch so they could pack in some extra features. I think that was a really good idea because this is probably the biggest step up we've ever had with the Blender release, even bigger than the jump from 2.79 to 2.8. The first thing I want to talk about is Cycles X. The Cycles render engine has been completely overhauled under a new project called Cycles X, adding extra functionality and enormous performance upgrades. I really can't stress enough just how much faster this is. We're talking about a 50% or more reduction in render time in most cases. Some of my scenes are rendering out three or four times faster compared to Blender 2.9. Any improvement to Cycles is obviously welcome, but this update makes Cycles one of the fastest and most capable unbiased path tracing engines on the market. Not only is rendering faster, but real time viewport performance is significantly quicker too. The old tile base system has gone that's been replaced by a progressive refinement system. Basically Cycles renders out the whole frame at once instead of splitting it up into smaller tiles. Adaptive sampling is now on by default too and it's been renamed to Noise Threshold. You can limit the render by time which does pretty much exactly what you'd expect it to. Blender will just keep rendering the frame until it hits either the sample limit or the time limit that you've set, then I'll move on to the next frame. We do have to have a quick word of warning here about compatibility. OpenCL support has been dropped from Cycles. That means some devices won't work with Cycles in Blender 3.0. Nvidia devices are completely unaffected since they use CUDA or Optics for rendering. AMD has been working with the Blender developers to integrate support for AMD graphics cards. Right now they've got it working but only on a few cards. It only officially supports RDNA 2 GPUs running on Windows machines. So if you have an older AMD card or you're a Linux user, you're possibly out of luck at least for now because there's no official support. Apple are also working to add Metal support, but that's not going to be in Blender 3.0, that's going to be 3.1 or later. So you might have problems there too. The Asset Browser is probably one of the most requested features of all time in Blender. It adds a library to Blender where you can store objects, materials and any other type of data block. It was introduced earlier on in the year as an experimental feature but now it's fully fleshed out and it works extremely well. You can mark any data block as an asset and it'll be stored away for easy access later and you can even drag and drop assets straight into the viewport. The asset browser also comes with a new pause library. When animating you can save pauses for later use and you can even blend in between two different pauses to make whole unique pauses and different animations. The Asset Browser is one of those features that once you've used it, it's really hard to believe that it wasn't always in Blender. It just makes so much sense. Next we need to talk about performance, because the performance upgrades to Blender 3.0 are basically endless. I honestly don't even know where to start here. We've already mentioned the huge update to Cycle's render speed and viewport performance, but it doesn't stop there. Blender supported file compression for a long time, but the old system was very slow. A new compression algorithm called Z standard has been added. It's about 90% faster when you save a compressed file, and it's about 66% faster when you open a compressed file. Editing mode performance has had a significant optimization too. Some editing actions on a really high resolution mesh are now two to three times faster than they used to be. Also, if you use the undo function while you're in edit mode, that's benefited from a nice little speed increase too, especially on high resolution measures. If you're working on a scene that has lots of rigid body physics objects, it's quite common that you'll just copy the rigid body properties from one object to lots of others, but that used to be horrendously slow. Thankfully, this has now been sped up massively. In some tests, it's 200 times faster. Instead of taking 60 seconds, it was taking 0.3 seconds. As you probably remember, a release or two ago, the Boolean tool got a new mode called Exact Mode. That works very well, but it's very slow, so there was also an alternative mode called Fast, which was less accurate. But the Exact Mode in Blender 3.0 is now much faster, it's almost in line with Fast Mode, and it works much better. The Open Image Denoiser has been upgraded to version 1.3, which is not only faster, but uses slightly less memory too. 
I could spend the rest of the day just talking about all the speed increases in Blender 3.0, but I'm sure you get the point. Almost every area is at least a little bit faster. But I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform where you can build and host your own beautiful website. You don't have to have coding experience or any history with web development because Squarespace uses a really intuitive drag and drop interface. You can use pre-made customizable templates to quickly come up with a variety of professional designs for any website use. I really like that Squarespace allows you to view your website as it'll be displayed on a cell phone or a tablet, which is really important these days because mobile traffic accounts for nearly half of web browsing. Click on the link in the description to start your free month trial of Squarespace. Make sure that you use the offer code DECODED and you'll get 10% off your first website or domain registration. So the big game changer coming in Blender 3.0 has got to be geometry nodes. Jigger nodes were introduced at the start of the year and it's capable of doing some pretty crazy stuff from basic things like scattering objects all the way to procedural asset generation. But the version that we got back then was confusing, it was counterintuitive, and it lacked a whole bunch of really basic features. There's a good reason why I only ever made one GeoNode video on this channel. The whole system was a little bit of a mess and I had a feeling that they were probably going to change the whole thing. And I was right about that because that's exactly what's happened. The entire system's been reworked and much improved for Blender 3.0, making it easier to understand and much more powerful. The old system that we used to have used a set of attributes stored inside the geometry. Each node would just override the properties of the attribute, and instead of flowing through the node tree as you would expect, every change you made was constantly passed back to the starting point, essentially overriding the original data. The data was constantly just passed around and overridden all over the node tree, and made it really difficult to figure out what the hell was going on. The new system basically abandons the idea of storing attributes in the geometry. Instead of a massive list of attribute nodes, we only get three. 3.0 Geo Nodes works much more like the shader workflow that we're all used to. Each node in the chain simply takes the input, modifies it in some way, and then passes it along the line to the next node. You can always go back to any point in the tree and just reference that value, take its output and use it somewhere else. The Blender developers have added literally dozens of extra nodes to Geometry Nodes. It gives the whole system a ton of extra functionality and people have been using it to make some really fantastic, crazy tools. I recently made a video about this post-apocalyptic New York environment that I made. I used Bagger's amazing Ivy Gen node setup for geometry nodes. It adds all these procedural plants all over the buildings. That's something that would have been an absolute nightmare to try and do by hand, but geometry nodes made it really simple. If you missed the New York video, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch that. I'll also link to the Ivy Gen node setup if you want to download that and give it a go. Okay, so for this last feature, I could talk about all sorts of changes coming in Blender. The interface has a whole new theme, the grease pencil tools have had tons of new updates, even the video sequence editors finally got a little bit of love, but I want to talk about the Terminator. No, not that Terminator, this Terminator. You're probably already familiar with it, it's a really common artifact in Blender when you're using cycles with fairly low poly meshes. Obviously in 3D we construct every shape from a load of flat planes. Now we can use smooth shading to hide this fact, at least to an extent, but it's much harder to hide the boundary between light and shadow. Instead of getting a nice smooth gradient like we'd get in real life, some faces will be lit and some faces just won't, which gives us this nasty jagged seam. Originally the only way to fix this issue was just to add more geometry. Then a few releases ago we got a slightly hacky workaround called the shading offset. So once you enable that setting it would basically add extra shading around the shadow areas. That did fix the terminator artifact but it did come with some big drawbacks. To start you had to enable it for every object assuming that you'd actually noticed the problem before you hit render. It made shadows darker than they should be and it also increased the spread of the shadow into areas that should normally be lit. But now in Blender 3.0 we finally have a functional fix for the Terminator artifact and the best thing about it is you don't have to even enable it or do anything, it just works. So in the shading section of the object panel we now have this setting called Geometry Offset. It's switched on by default and you shouldn't need to touch it at all. 
Basically, it just uses a slightly different algorithm to calculate the light ray collisions based on the normals of the faces. So on a smooth shaded object, it'll act like the surface is actually smooth and you'll get a nice gradient that goes from light to shadow. So we can finally say goodbye to the Terminator for good. Or should that be Hasta La Vista? Sorry, that was terrible. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Let me know which 3.0 features you're most looking forward to. While you're down there, don't forget to check out the link in the description to Squarespace. Remember to use the offer code DECODED and you'll get 10% off your first website or domain name registration.